So, all the examples that we have seen so far are steady uh, state uh, situations where there is no change in the uh, inside the control volume. So, you may recall that uh, we wrote down uh, this requirement as uh, like this. So, d c v d t was 0 in all the cases that we saw so far and d m c v d t was also equal to 0. So, whatever mass came in uh, went out. So, that there is no accumulation or depletion of mass within the control volume. These two conditions were satisfied. So, all the examples could be treated as steady uh, flow examples. What we will do now is look at a couple of examples involving uh, unsteady situation where uh, there is some change inside the control volume from beginning to end of the process. So, that, that calls for an unsteady analysis. Okay. So, either d e c v d t is not equal to 0 or d m c v d t is not equal to 0, one of the two or both. Okay. So, let us take a look at uh, what, we, uh, what we have here. So, an insulated rigid vessel of volume 500 liters which is initially evacuated is connected to a line in which steam at 20 bar 400 degree fl uh, Celsius flows through a valve. So, we have seen this before. So, so we have a line in which a steam is flowing and we are connecting an initially evacuated vessel, <coughs> insulated rigid vessel. So, it is insulated. So, we show that like this. So, steam is flowing in this line and the control volume for this, uh, for this case may be taken like this. So, this is the control volume for suitable for this analysis. We have uh, seen this before. Okay. So, we are asked to, um, uh, so we, um, the valve is open, steam is allowed to slowly flow into the vessel until the pressure inside is the same as the line pressure at which point the valve is closed. We are asked to determine the final temperature inside the vessel and the mass that enters. Neglect Ke and, uh, neglect heat loss and Ke and Pe changes. Okay. So, if you uh, recall the um, uh, unsteady um, energy equation uh, looks like this in its full form. Let us just uh, go back and take a look. So, this is the unsteady flow energy equation in its full form. So, for the problem under consideration, it is given that there is no heat loss. So, q dot may be taken as 0 and there is no external work. So, w x dot may also be taken to be 0. Mass enters the control volume, but no mass leaves the control volume. So, we take m e dot to be equal to 0. Uh, we have also been told to neglect uh, k e and p e changes, which means that we may take this to be 0 and uh, E control volume, uh, you may recall that uh, E control volume is equal to U plus Ke plus Pe in the control volume. Since there is no change in Ke and Pe in the control volume, we may also write uh, for this particular case uh, ECV equal to UCV. So, with these simplifications, So, with these simplifications, the unsteady flow energy equation becomes d e c v d t equal to d u c v d t equal to m i dot times h i dot, I am sorry m i dot times h i. And the unsteady mass balance equation becomes d m c v d t equal to m i dot since m e dot is equal to 0. So, if I uh, combine this or if I combine these two equations, I get the following d u c v d t equal to h i times d m c v d t. What is that? H i is equal to H line in this case. So, H i is the enthalpy of the fluid at entry into the control volume which would be this point. So, at entry into the control volume, the fluid enters with the same enthalpy as uh, it had in the line. So, there is no thermodynamic process between here and here. So, it enters with the same enthalpy so that H i is equal to H line. And U C V is the total internal energy in the control volume. 
uh, you should recall that we are using um, uh, since we are using an uppercase uh, letter here this is an extensive quantity. So, u is equal to mass within the control volume times the specific internal energy within the control volume. So, capital U equal to m times u. And since h line remains constant with time, we can integrate both sides of this equation to, uh, to get this expression. And initially the vessel is evacuated, so m1 is equal to 0. So, if you rearrange you get u2 equal to h line, which is the same expression that we obtained when we used a system approach for solving this problem. Okay. So, basically unsteady analysis. Uh, proceeds in more or less the same manner as steady analysis. You have the unsteady flow energy equation uh, and the mass balance uh, equation. So, you look at the equation, um, simplify it throwing out terms which are not relevant or which are equal to 0 and then uh, simplify and then integrate using the information that is given. Okay, Let us um, uh, move on to the next problem. So, here, so the, the this example, um, this example looked at um, uh, filling a vessel with uh, steam. The, so, that is a filling process. The next one um, looks at emptying a vessel, uh, you know, through a certain process. So, this is an emptying process, okay. So, a rigid vessel initially contains a certain amount of saturated R134A vapor and a certain amount of saturated R134A liquid at a pressure of 900 kilo Pascal. So, we are looking at a situation like this. So, there is a valve that is provided on top of the vessel. So, the pressure inside the vessel is maintained constant uh, by this valve. So, so we have we have liquid here and we have saturated vapor here. So, uh, the uh, the valve allows the uh, pressure to remain constant, uh, I am sorry, uh, the valve maintains the pressure inside the vessel constant by allowing <coughs> saturated vapor to escape. So, we now heat the contents of the vessel un until all the liquid evaporates. We are asked to calculate the mass of vapor that escapes and the heat that is supplied. Now, control volume ana analysis for this problem would uh, require us to define a control volume that looks like this. Okay. So, using the given information, the dryness fraction at the initial state may be evaluated as 0 0.0625, okay, which means it is practically all liquid. And the total mass is 16 kg, 1 kg of vapor plus 15 kg of liquid. So, the total mass is 16 kg. So, 900 kPa uh, is the pressure. So, from the uh, pressure table, uh, we may retrieve Vf to be equal to this and Vg, Uf and Ug to be equal to this. So, specific volume at the uh, initial state is equal to 2.223 times 10 raise to minus 3 meter cube per kilogram. Okay. So, the volume of the vessel may be evaluated since we know the mass that is initial there and we know the specific volume, the volume of the vessel may be evaluated to be 0 0.0356 meter cube. Now, we supply heat starting from this state, we start supplying heat until all the liquid evaporates which means there is only saturated vapor inside the vessel. So, the final state is saturated vapor. Okay. So, at the final state, the uh, uh, specific volume of the uh, contents of the vessel is simply equal to specific volume of the saturated vapor, which is equal to this. And the mass that is contained may be evaluated quite easily because we know the volume of the vessel, we know the specific volume at the final state. So, the mass that remains finally is 1.57 kilogram. So, the mass of vapor that escapes is 16 minus 1.57, which is 14.43 kilogram. So, we, um, uh, we defined the control volume to be like this. So, we simplify the unsteady flow energy equation to this case and we end up with an expression like this. Remember, m i dot is equal to 0 for this case and m e dot is not equal to 0. K e and p e changes are neglected. The unsteady mass balance equation looks like this. So, we combine these two equations and we may write du cv dt equal to q dot plus he times dm cv dt. 
Now, if I look at my control volume, H e is the enthalpy of the fluid as it leaves the control volume. So, you can see that at uh, the location where it leaves the control volume, the fluid has the same enthalpy as the enthalpy in the control, control volume itself. So, we can write H e equal to H g. Since we are allowing only saturated vapor to escape and it leaves at the same state as the state inside the control volume, we may write H e equal to H g and H g is saturated uh, specific enthalpy of saturated vapor at 900 kilo Pascal and it does not change with time uh, or during the process, which means that we can integrate this equation to get this expression finally. And if you substitute the known values, we get the heat supplied to be 2515.285 kilojoules. Okay. Notice how uh, we evaluate H e in this problem and H i in the previous problem. So, H e is the enthalpy of the fluid at entry to the control volume, H i is the enthalpy of the fluid, I am sorry, H e is the enthalpy of the fluid at exit to the control volume and H uh, i is the enthalpy of the fluid at entry to the control volume. That was how it was defined when we derived the unsteady flow energy equation. You must keep that in mind and define the control volume accordingly so that H i and H e or no. The next example involving unsteady analysis um, is this. So, we have a rigid vessel of uh, volume 500 liter which uh, contains air at a pressure of 1 bar. So, we have a valve and we uh, connect this to a vacuum pump. So, the vacuum pump extracts air at a constant rate of 0 0.1 meter cube per minute. So, the volume flow rate leaving the uh, vessel is constant and it is given to be 0 0.01. So, heat exchange also occurs between the vessel and the surroundings to keep the temperature of the air within the vessel constant. Determine time taken to reduce the pressure in the vessel to one fourth of the initial value and the magnitude and size of the heat interaction between the vessel and the surroundings. Now, uh, control volume that is uh, uh, suitable for this case would look like this. So, the unsteady flow uh, energy equation uh, simplified to this particular situation looks like this W x dot is uh, 0, M i dot is 0 and M e dot is non-zero. So, we have something like this and this is the unsteady mass balance equation. So, this is the mass M c v is the mass that is uh, inside the control volume at any instant. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, nothing but uh, PV over RT. You may recall that we have air inside the control volume. So, the equation of state gives us PV equal to MRT at any instant. So, the mass inside the control volume at any instant may be written as the pressure inside the control volume times the volume divided by RT, where PV and T are evaluated at each instant. But you may also recall that the temperature remains constant in this particular case heat exchange occurs to keep the temperature constant, the volume of the vessel is also constant. Okay. Now, M e dot in this particular case, the volume flow rate leaving the control volume is a constant and it is equal to 0 0.01 meter cube per minute. So, the um, mass flow rate that leaves the control volume may be written as density times the volume flow rate, density as it leaves times the volume flow rate. Now, density as the fluid leaves the uh, control volume may be rewritten using the equation of state like this, where P is the pressure as it leaves the control volume, T is the temperature as it leaves the control volume, okay? which is the same as the pressure inside the control volume and the temperature inside the control volume because of the manner in which we have drawn the control volume. So, we may write this equation like this. And if you use the fact that temperature remains constant, this equation simplifies to something like this, which may then be integrated uh, to give this expression for the pressure at any instant in the vessel. So, the time taken to reduce the pressure to one fourth of the initial value is uh, 69.31 minutes. Now, if I combine these two equations, I get the following. Uh, 
right. So, q dot is equal to d u c v d t remember u c v is equal to uh, m c v times u c v ok and uh, m c v may be re rewritten uh, in terms of I mean using the equation of state u c v is nothing but c v times t ok and we have done the uh, same thing for this expression here and h is equal to cp times t. So, if you uh, go through a little bit of algebra you get uh, uh, q dot to be equal to this and since the volume of the vessel remains constant we can integrate both sides of the expression to get q to be equal to uh, 37.5 kilojoules plus 37.5 kilojoules that means it is being supplied by the ambient to the vessel ok. Uh, so, again as I said before uh, the uh, the key steps in solving uh, problems uh, that involve unsteady situation or to uh, identify a proper control volume, write down the full form of the unsteady flow energy equation, simplify uh, according to the uh, information given in the problem and then usually it involves uh, integrating the unsteady equation to obtain the final values ok. Key uh, another key aspect to unsteady flow analysis problem is h i and h e ok. Uh, be careful when defining the control volume so that you can evaluate h i and h e in a convenient uh, manner. This is the last example uh, on unsteady flow analysis that we will look at. Uh, this involves um, a, a rigid tank which uh, contains air uh, initially at a temperature P1 and T1 and um, uh, instead of discharging the air directly to the atmosphere, it is actually discharged through a turbine into the atmosphere. So, there is a turbine that is connected here. The idea is to extract uh, some work from the air before it is exhausted to the uh, ambient. So, as you can see here the tank is uh, fully insulated. So, let us uh, show it like this. Now, the air is always expanded to the atmospheric pressure. So, P e is always equal to P atmosphere and uh, the valve is opened and the air is allowed to expand through the turbine until the uh, pressure in the uh, tank finally becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure ok. And for the purpose of simplifying the analysis, we are also told that the mass of air in the turbine at any instant and its energy may be neglected because as the air expands there will be a finite amount of mass in the turbine. We have been asked to neglect it and also the energy that this contains you know because we have to apply the unsteady uh, energy equation as well. So, that is the uh, problem description. So, we take the tank and the turbine together as the control volume. So, our control volume is going to uh, look like this. So, this is our control volume. And if you apply unsteady um, uh, energy equation to this control volume, uh, q dot uh, may be taken to be equal to 0 because the tank and the turbine are insulated. Uh, uh, Mi dot equal to 0, no mass enters the control volume, this control volume. Notice that no mass enters this control volume and then, uh, but the mass uh, leaves the control volume. So, Me dot is not equal to 0 and we also neglect Ke and Pe terms. So, with this uh, uh, simplifications the unsteady flow energy equation reduces to d u c v d t equal to minus w x dot minus m e dot times h e dot I am sorry minus m e dot times h e. So, if we uh, combine uh, these two equations we finally uh, get uh, d by d t of m times u. Notice that we have replaced C v with the tank because the amount of mass in the turbine and its energy may be neglected. So, uh, we can write we can replace C v with tank here ok. Now, we may assume uh, the air in the tank to have undergone 
a process that uh, obeys PV raised to gamma equal to constant because uh, the tank and the turbine are insulated there is no heat exchange with the surroundings and it is a fully resisted process. So, we had shown earlier that for a an ideal gas it undergoes an adiabatic process the process uh, may be uh, written as PV raised to gamma equal to constant. So, we assume the same here that uh, the process uh, follows expansion process follows this. So, uh, if I apply this to the initial state at any instant and the fi and the exit here, uh, I may write it like this after noting that the uh, final pressure of the air in the tank is P atmosphere. Okay. So, this is in the initial state and this is at any instant and this is at the final state. At the final state the pressure in the tank is equal to uh, P atmosphere and the, uh, the temperature of the air in the tank is also equal to T e. Okay. So, the exit temperature T e also does not change during this process. Okay. So, we integrate the previous expression that we derived here uh, because H e is equal to C p times T e and uh, since the air is always expanded to the atmospheric pressure T e uh, remains the same. So, T e is a constant. So, H e is a constant which means we can integrate this equation and obtain an expression that looks like this. So, here we have used the equation of state P v equal to m r t uh, for uh, rewriting the uh, mass in the tank at any instant. So, if you simplify this you finally, get an expression for uh, the work done that looks, uh, looks like this. Okay. Typically, um, if the initial pressure is very high and if you expand the air to the uh, atmospheric pressure, the temperature T e will be very, very low. So, uh, a more practical situation for instance, if you are looking at using uh, such a device in an automobile you know uh, for uh, developing energy or power in an automobile, uh, normally the um, uh, tank I am um, sorry the air in the tank um, will remain at a constant temperature which is equal to the ambient temperature. Okay, So, that the pressure with which it leaves will be slightly different that is a more meaningful scenario, but here for the purpose of demonstrating how to carry out an unsteady analysis we assume that the air is always expanded to the uh, atmospheric uh, pressure uh, as a result of which the temperature here will be very very low. Okay. Notice how uh, we have combined uh, two devices into a single control volume and uh, simplified the analysis. Okay. Um, we can also uh, split this into two different control volumes and then combine the two. So, we come up with the two sets of equations then we can combine the two equations and we will then end up with the same uh, governing equations that we have here. It is as if we have taken two different control volumes and then combined them together. Okay. So, this uh, concludes our discussion on uh, first law analysis of systems and first law analysis of uh, devices using control volume uh, approach and what we will do next uh, is to move on to second law of thermodynamics.